Hey everybody, it's Dr. Osborne, founder of Gluten Free Society. Today, I want to talk a little bit about the question, does coffee cause autoimmune disease? There are a lot of people out there recommending the complete avoidance of coffee if you have autoimmune disease. So I wanted to do something on the actual research. What does the research show? And I'll also chime in on my own clinical experience in this area. I've got a vast array of experience in people struggling with autoimmune disease and coffee consumption. So before we get into this, it's important that you know I'm not trying to take away your coffee. This is not me saying everybody needs to avoid coffee at all costs. So before you run away or shut this video down, uh, just keep an open mind as we go through the next several uh, points here. So who should be concerned about coffee? These are the autoimmune conditions that if you have them, you definitely want to be concerned about coffee. Number one, rheumatoid arthritis. There's research that shows that rheumatoid arthritis contributed to by coffee consumption. Number two, diabetes, type one specifically. Number three, Hashimoto's hypothyroid or autoimmune hypothyroid disease. And then again, those with pre-existing GI inflammation. So Barrett's esophagitis, chronic acid reflux. You know, if you're popping Tums in and out on a daily basis, pay attention. This is, this is who I'm referring to. And then peptic ulcer disease. If you've been diagnosed with ulcers and the doctors told you you did not have H. pylori, helicobacter pylori is a type of bacterial infection that can cause ulcers, then it may be coffee that's at the root of this problem. And then those with celiac disease as well. So again, if you've got celiac disease, Barrett's esophagus, um, chronic and acid reflux, or peptic ulcer disease, um, those are all GI inflammatory conditions that you want to be concerned about. Now let's, let's kind of dive into some of the research. So this study review shows that coffee is linked to autoimmunity. And you'll look at the bold points here. Coffee consumption seems to increase the risk of developing rheumatoid arthritis and type 1 diabetes. You can see down below, coffee intake led to a decrease in insulin sensitivity in type 1 diabetes, a decrease in methotrexate efficacy in rheumatoid arthritis. In essence, it interfered with the medicines that many doctors use to treat RA, even though I would disagree with the use of those medicines. Uh, if you're depending on them, coffee can interfere with that. And then in addition, coffee interferes with the absorption of thyroid medication, levothyroxine, in Hashimoto's disease. So if you're being medicated, look, if you're not working with a doctor whose goal is to try to help you overcome the autoimmune problem and you're just, you know, you're just reticent at being medicated and happy with that, you need to be concerned about whether or not you're drinking coffee. Now, furthermore, coffee consumption was also associated with cross-reactivity with gliadin antibodies in celiac patients. And I've talked about that in depth. I'll actually link to that video at the end of this video if you want to go and learn more about that. So those of you with gluten sensitivity issues or celiac disease, you should dive into that video to get more information. Now, quantity matters and additives matter because it's not always just about the coffee, but I I'm sticking to the coffee at first. So in this research study, you can see it's demonstrated that coffee promotes gastroesophageal reflux. In essence, it promotes GERD, right? reflux disease. So again, if you're the person with Tums and Rolaids in your back pocket, uh, if you're the person taking Nexium, Protonix, Tagamet, Zantac, any of those to make sure that your heartburn stays at bay, this is for you. You might want to consider reevaluating your morning beverage consumption. Um, coffee promotes gastroesophageal disease, period. So quantity does matter. The more you drink, the, the more it's promoting of that. Now, it also matters what you put in your coffee. So if you're using dairy, non-dairy creamers, you know, that are full of corn syrup and GMO ingredients, know that many of these things can also be GI irritants and can just work to help exacerbate it. So if you're adding all these things to your coffee, that may be part of your issue as well, even though it could also, if you're just drinking black coffee, just black coffee can also do this. Now, in this research study, you can see the impairment of GI mucosal barrier by coffee. Our results indicate that coffee damages the gastroduodenal mucosa in habitual coffee drinkers. And what does that mean? That means it can cause leaky gut. So if you've got a leaky gut issue, you might want to put coffee on the shelf for a while until, you're, until you get your gut situated, until you get it dialed in and feeling better. So again, this is not me damning all of you trying to drink coffee or damning the drink of coffee altogether. It's just simply stating that if you've got autoimmune disease, 
particularly Hashimoto's, type 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, celiac disease, gastric reflux disease, you might want to reevaluate coffee as your choice of morning beverage. And, uh, and, and hopefully that's helpful for you because many, many in my clinic struggle until they find this piece of information out. So I'm trying to prevent you from the struggles that many have when they are changing their diet and trying to overcome their autoimmune condition. So make sure you comment, like, and subscribe below. How do you do with coffee? Leave us your feedback. Your feedback really might help change or save somebody's life. And uh, remember, our mission at Gluten Free Society is all about saving lives. Hashtag save 100 million lives. This is Dr. Osborne, founder of Gluten Free Society. We'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.